All right, so let's turn our attention one last time uh, to uh, the next uh, category or sub uh, dimension of each of these stages of life that we've been looking at. We looked at infancy and childhood and adolescence, and now we're looking at adulthood. And like I mentioned before, adulthood actually can be divided up into three different categories of early, middle, and late. So, but, but what I want to focus on, at least right now, is this, the idea of social development, which, you know, in each category of development in adulthood, uh, the demands and understanding of it is far different. Uh, the key point to keep in mind is really we spend far more time in adulthood than we do any other time of our lives, even though we spend most of our time, particularly during adolescence and emerging adulthood, looking forward to these days. But uh, the, the main uh, activities, if you will, really is uh, love and work. Uh, Freud made mention of the fact that um, the healthy adult is one who can love and work, and that's part of the, the aspect of it. So with social development, some psychologists have suggested that adults progress through an orderly sequence of life stages. Um, they argue, for example, that uh, as people enter their 40s, they undergo uh, a midlife transition is the word that is often used. You might have heard it before as said uh, or called a midlife crisis. The reality is, is that um, there is no such thing as this. Uh, sometimes it, it ends up being more like a mid-decade uh, crisis for a lot of people who begin to do, start doing the calculations that there's more, less life ahead of them than there is behind them. Uh, the whole stereotype of a man hitting his 40s and getting dissatisfied and divorcing and marrying a younger woman and et cetera is really a, a misnomer in a lot of cases. And that that's, uh, fits this, uh, this category here of uh, midlife crisis. It really is quite a misnomer. The reality, in a lot of ways, is that really not much changes. There is not a surge in dissatisfaction during the 40s. Um, and so th we, we have this urban mythology that goes along with it, essentially. Now, one of the key components uh, with this is the idea of what we would refer to as a social clock. And, and in a lot of ways, it's an internalized set of expectations um, that people have about certain life uh, events and uh, uh, stages, if you will. And so what really impacts uh, the laying out of one's life, if you will, and their expect or their uh, perception of it really has to do with expectations, which when you think about it is really all about psychology, the person's psychology and how they think. So the social clock really determines um, uh, a timetable of adult ages and stages um, and the, the expected things that will happen at certain stages. So, you know, one goes off to college and so, somewhere along the way one meets their pr uh, prospective spouse and by the end of college they're getting married and moving on and having um, um, having kids and so on and so forth. That's a good example of a social clock, but when those things occur is part of what that social clock is. Uh, in women, a lot of times they talk about their biological clock, particularly when they're talking about uh, the childbearing years. And so uh, as women get older, they begin to feel like their clock is running out in terms of having kids. Um, safely, if you will, although we have lots of examples of women that have kids into their 40s. So the variations and so forth that take place really have to do with how we perceive things rather than how things really, really are. And uh, the other aspect here, which it needs to be commented upon, really, is the aspect of, of marriage, love and marriage, you know, as the old song goes, which you guys probably 
really don't know. Your parents probably would. But when it occurs, who we meet, a lot of times, um, uh, a lot of couples like to engage in something that they call a trial marriage, otherwise known as cohabiting. Uh, what's interesting about cohabiting is that the rationale for doing it is uh, to uh, kind of try it on for size and that way then nobody's hurt in a sense. Um, the, in, the thing about this is, is that their divorce rate is way higher than the average, uh, which granted is not good, it's about 50-50, but their divorce rate is higher. and they are, uh, during the time that they're cohabiting, they are less supportive of marriage. And so they, they take a more dim view of marriage as an important institution in people's lives. Uh, and what, what we find is that all of the research points to increased health, increased even mental health um, in people that are married, and their tendency is to uh, uh, last longer. The other thing is the unrealistic expectations oftentimes that people have around conflict when they're married. There is such a thing as constructive conflict that strengthens the marriage and increases the level of intimacy. Uh, it, it, constructive conflict for a lot of people really seems to be an oxymoron, but it increases intimacy. If, if they fight fair, if uh, they allow their differences to be seen because a lot of times that's exactly what conflict ends up being. Uh, and so uh, constructive conflict leads to greater intimacy and therefore longer longevity. The other aspect really is uh, um, context here that I need to mention is Eric Erickson again. And when we talk about social development, in adulthood, mid, uh, early, mid, and late. We're talking about two key issues in his mind that are part of this. One is uh, intimacy, which we've just spent a little time talking about. Um, Got to get my N in there. And the second one is what he refers to as generativity. And generativity is investing in the next generation. And that can be uh, people directed, kids, other people, um, uh, etc., or it can be uh, legacy directed if you want to put it that way. Um, a lot of the athletes in the Olympics this year, particularly Usain Bolt, uh, talked about legacy and that he will be, his arrogance a little annoyed me, but. His, he will be a legend now, that he is the greatest of all sprinters. And, and generativity has a lot to do with that, uh, and intimacy in terms of establishing uh, stable relationships that, that uh, go into the future itself. So um, those are the main issues. Erickson uh, is, is, like I mentioned before, is really the first theorists that looked across the lifespan rather than just uh, within the first um, 12 to 13 years, and these two major issues come into play. Now, let's turn our attention just to the end, um, and I don't mean the end of uh, this uh, series of modules, but the end of life, because it is one of the major issues, even in generativity, it is one of the major issues that confronts uh, adults uh, as they grow older.